Hello everybody and welcome to this amazing review of Dead by Daylight 2.2.0 PTB patch notes. Gosh, a lot to say. In this video we'll cover as much of these patch notes as possible to give you insight to everything as quickly as possible while also giving you my thoughts on the killer and survivor at the near end. If you missed the release of the killer and survivor for the PTB, they're not included in these patch notes so please follow the link in the description down below if you want to know the power of the killer, the perks of both the killer and survivor. And with that out of the way, onto the patch notes. So first, survivors are introduced to the new status, Broken. This is a temporary no mither effect. Simply, when affected, you cannot be healed to full health until the effect fades over time. This effect is applied from Adam's new deliverance perk. Next, the changes to hooks were made both in points and rescue results. First, you get less points for the initial rescue and are awarded additional points if the survivor who is rescued is considered safe so they don't take any damage in 10 seconds. Then you'll get bonus points after the fact. Additionally, while being saved, you are invincible until you are fully saved and are given control off of the hook. Therefore, if the killer tries to strike you as you're coming down, you will take no damage until you can move yourself. Meaning, if you have dead heart or something like that, you would be able to get some movement in before you actually actually can be hurt. They also doubled the recovery speed if you were to pull yourself off of the hook. This invincibility is also applied to this moment as well as you cannot be hurt until you are off the hook and can move. Until then you are invincible and the killer cannot put you down till you have control. Next the biggest change of these patch notes. All major long loops in maps have been changed to prevent survivors from abusing longer than intended chases. This includes maps such as Torment Creek, Fracture Cowshed, Rancid Avatar, Gas Haven, Wretched Shop, Groaning Storehouse, Disturbed Ward, Coal Tower, Mother's Dwelling, and Grim Pantry, even including the Treatment Theater. All these changes are massive, as these maps in these certain areas have either lost the window completely as they're permanently boarded up, lost pallets, or have had obstacles placed in the way that just drastically change the you pretty much won't be able to complete the loop. It is a nice look. The maps actually look different. Larry's Memorial needs a little bit of touching up as there were some issues as we believe there was supposed to be a Larry's Memorial change. It doesn't say in the patch notes, but there have been visual recordings of Larry's Memorial being blocked off uh, in the receptionist area in terms of the library. Bloodlust received its nerf, lowering its speeds at tier 2 and tier 3 to prevent it from being abused as a tool to catch survivors intentionally. A more detailed breakdown of the emblem system is now available at the end screen so you can see what percentage of progress you made towards the iridescent uh, emblem. Traps of the Trapper have increased in disarm time to 3.5, up from 2.5, but now allows survivors to perform trap buffering, meaning when they begin to disarm the trap itself, it is not a threat. A survivor could run over it for as long as you are working on it. Uh, this is to allow for interesting and fun gameplay. Not exactly a nerf, especially since it does receive a buff. Wraith received massive changes to his add-ons and gained a small buff. I've listed here every add-on change in the patch notes for you as, I mean, it's just pretty detailed. Um, I just want to do the major things uh, for the patch notes. So if you want to see what specifically got changed, hit the pause button and review the specific add-ons you wish. So first, Wraith has now received a windstorm effect by default. He gains a movement speed buff for one second when reappearing. But they also state that they adjust his movement speed while reappearing, but they don't specify whether it's in a negative or positive light. Light burn requires 2 seconds up from 1.5 seconds, therefore flashlights take longer to stun the Wraith out of invisibility. Wraith has now a few new ultra rare add-ons, and a new add-on called Shadow Dance was introduced. Shadow Dance is a very powerful add-on. It's the newest thing, but I think it's one of the most interesting add-ons he's gotten. This alone is one of the best add-ons I've seen for the Wraith personally. I love this add-on to death. It allows you to quickly break pallets, vault windows, and damage gens. Essentially, you can vault windows at a near god speed of a survivor as a killer. That's just how fast it is. Breaking generators can be done with a, without a thought while just in the middle of a chase and you don't lose them. It's fantastic. 
all of Wraith's add-ons have been adjusted in some way to be very useful. As an example, Coxed Comb Clapper now makes the Wraith Bell completely silent. Survivors can't hear you uncloaking. There's no whoosh, no nothing. This includes going back into invisibility. The only thing that's going to give you away is your terror radius appearing or disappearing. But that's fantastic as if you cloak right in front of them, of course they're going to see you. But if you're going to cloak behind a wall, you've kind of got them. They won't see it coming. There's also new add-ons that prevent your terror rays from coming back, which just continue to help play the stealth game for the Wraith. As the last few updates, palette changes were made to allow the animation for the survivor facing the palette to be faster. Uh, they've returned the simple drop animation, which allows the palette to drop faster, feel more consistent, and prevents the killer from reaching through, which means it'll be slightly harder for killers. Additionally, Nurse also got a slight animation update upon interrupting a survivor, and that's really it. Among all the vast bug fixes that they have here, I'm not going to list them because I don't believe them to be all too accurate since a lot of the game kind of broke mid-patch, but this is a huge patch. Either way, I don't mind. I just hope the Ruin bug doesn't make it through, uh, which I'm sure they'll fix. Right now, uh, based on this PTB, Ruin just does not work. Uh, you get skill checks, it doesn't doesn't regress the generator or stop it if they don't hit great. So Ruin's done, and that kind of sucked. But we really got to test out a lot of new things. So here we wanted to kind of show off the Shadow Dance's speed of breaking a generator, and then you'll see we, we played around this area here as well. This was all done in Kill Your Friends simply because PTB's a pain to get random games. And I apologize for the chewing in the background. Those rats like their log a lot. Um, so this is what the new loop looks like. It's pretty big and now the two major windows are permanently locked out. They will never uh, be open again after this. So the large loop here ends and as you can see as Wraith I'm able to catch up. There will never be a pallet here and the area changes. So I would have to break the pallet there and that's up to me. And they made this area a relatively safe uh, area for a survivor to jump in between. You gotta make the right choice as killer if you want to land that. And that's essentially what you can expect from every listed map from all the changes. There, it's, It is massive. The Cull Tower change is drastic too. The loop is too small to loop now and um, you're just not gonna be able to do what you used to do. So the reliance on those larger loops is gone. Uh, Wraith himself at base, I think personally, I don't like it because even though they gave him a one second movement speed on reappearance, they even stated in the patch notes that they adjusted his reappearance speed, which I think they lowered it. It feels that way. I'm going to continue to dive and get confirmation on whether or not uh, he's it, that happened. If it did, it really defeated the purpose of giving him a movement speed boost. If he's even slower on reappearance, I could be wrong again. Uh, this is just my speculation of things. I have to be very clear. People think I'm complaining when I'm just giving you an opinion, kids. Um, so the other big thing to keep in mind too with the Wraith is his add-ons are actually really good. Um, but the problem for someone like me is I recently went through the whole spiel of spending all of my blood points prestiging things, which means add-ons were hard to come across because it just had to be poured into one killer to prestige them. And I, I finally got them all to prestige three and that's fine. But that also left me dry on add-ons because I, I'm not getting any in the other, what, 11 killers that I'm not, or the 11 killers that I am playing versus the one I'm feeding. So for me, kind of sucked. But for players who main the Wraith, for players who can get those add-ons and have the good Shadow Dance, the good Swift Hunt, you will love the Wraith. And facing a Wraith at this point with Shadow Dance is going to be terrifying for me. So it is nice to see that Wraith got a substantial buff to his add-ons, but without him, still kind of a Freddy. And that, that sucks, but moving on, we got some other killer and uh, survivor to talk about. The spirit herself is not a bad killer. Mid-tier, guaranteed, high-tier possibility. The reason I say possibility is because she's one of those killers that is similar to Nurse. 
you have a killer who has a skill that is not particularly easy to master by day one. So the potential of what the spirit has is high, but we'll see if that potential is there for survivors to counterplay. I have only gotten to play against the spirit one time, and it did not go well for her. Uh, I, I kind of can see how to counter the spirit in a sense of counterplay. Um, but she's a cool character. I like her as a character. I love her add-ons. I love potential of what she has, but I don't like her to play as her. It's not fun for me. Her power is just not fun for me. Um, I have a lot of problems trying to listen to effects in this game, and I think my hearing is just not as good as some. So relying strictly on he like audio is really hard. Um, you get some visual cues while uh, you're using your phase walk, which I can take advantage of, but not many. So sacrificing the only thing I can rely on, which is actually seeing the survivor, is a very dangerous kind of uh, adventure there. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. It is the literal mind game button, a, a game of chance whether you do or do not. Now, of course, your skill and knowledge of trying to figure out where your opponent is makes all the difference. Um, trying to fake them out, it's a, but it all relies on your opponent as well. It's, it's equal 50-50. You appear somewhere, and if they are there, because they are where you predicted that they would be, then good. But if they predicted you'd be there and they walked a different direction, you are done in. Um, this can be a little frustrating as you are following somebody um, but I got confirmation from the game director himself. Uh, he stopped by my stream. Very wonderful guy. Uh, he confirmed that she walks at the same speed of Huntress and Hag, so 110% movement speed. It's, uh, it's a real rough run. It really is. Uh, so she is slower, and this kind of really pushes you to use her ability, and therefore, very much like the Huntress, you're weaker in chases without your ability and her ability is a literal game of can you or can you not figure out what your opponent's gonna do without seeing them. Um, so in the PTB, you can see blood right now. You're not supposed to be able to uh, at all, apparently, when you go into phase walk. Uh, that's actually left into an ultra rare add-on, but right now you can, so I know a lot of us are taking advantage of that. I know I am. You can't see new blood, but you can see the old blood, but that isn't supposed to highlight itself very well. The spirit is great, and there is good power behind her. Like, I love sneaking up to a generator, so I leave my husk behind, go up to a generator from a distance, and they don't even know I'm coming, and boom, get an interrupt, get a hit, whatever. It's fantastic. That feeling is great but it's the chase feeling that's horrible. In the video you're watching now, I'm actually using an add-on that's kind of like Windstorm for the Wraith. When you reappear, it uh, definitely does some justice. And you'll see here, I'm just really just trying to wait for my power to come back. That's the other thing I really don't like is that when your power's not at full, you can't use it at all. So I just sat there, I was like, well, if I'm gonna be looped here, I'm just gonna use my mind game power to essentially get heard in and a, a very popular technique right now is that spirit stands still and spirit just stands still and people think that she left the body i'm not sure if the animation of her leaving her body and phase walking is playable i will go into researching that for more but just on a personal level i, I just don't like her power um it's very much like i don't like nurse's power either very much i don't like nurse being stunned to me that's not very fun well, that's why i like people like um myers you know I, I like stalking my enemies i like them being afraid of me i like them not knowing i'm there and then out of nowhere i come and give them the scare and, and you know people like playing the doctor for his shock ability and the madness that are just out of everything the spirit brings to the table her perks are fantastic she is a great character she's got a katana of, of all things i just don't like her power. So on a personal level, I don't like her power. Adam Francis, probably bringing some of the new most op overpowered perks I've ever seen. Autodidact is going to be my new main perk. Um, that healing is intense. I'm sure you're relying on a little bit of luck, but what's luck when I'm, I'm the master of 
unfortunate skill check, so I'll just make sure I'm as unfortunate as possible and take advantage there. And with that out of the way, I mean, that really wraps up all I have to say. Wraith changes at base are not are exactly as I predicted, but the add-on changes are what really make the Wraith rework really work this time. Uh, Spirit, good killer, great potential, is gonna take someone with a lot of practice to really be able to read uh, survivors without seeing them. And um, it's got counterplay, it's got something unique, but it's, it's possible that it's not viable at a high rank and it's too hard for a low rank and I'm not sure where the balance will come. That, that's gonna come with testing, that's gonna take some time. But she can be played very well, she can be very terrifying, and we'll just have to wait and see as the days go on what the spirit is truly capable of. Sorry for the long rant on that one, ladies and gentlemen, but a lot of people have been asking me for that information, so I thought I'd pass it on along with the patch notes, but we got your patch notes out of the way as soon as possible, so there you go. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I apologize for the length of this video. I was only hoping it'd be like seven minutes, but we got some more things coming along. I've got answers to the Q&A that just happened and a um, lot of news coming up regarding Dead by Daylight. Uh, we got the lore of the killer survivor coming up as it normally does. And with that out of the way, I just want to say thank you for being as awesome as you always are. Thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And as always, rats stop chewing on that log on the outro. As always, good game. Is that you, Alucard? I swear, if you're chewing that log again.